you are in for a real treat today. We've got an amazing opportunity to get the underwater cameras out again. We're at the fabulous Docklo Pools. You can see behind us, everywhere's frozen, but that doesn't matter because we are interested in a little bit of a geeky way in feeders, how they work. What happens if we load them in different ways? Now, obviously, Lee and I, we do loads of feeder fishing, and a lot like a lot of you guys at home. And quite often, we cast out, we sort of have an idea of what's happening under the water and what we're trying to achieve, but is it actually doing that under the water? You know, when we put some soft ground bait in the feeder with a bit of bait and we cast it out, is it reacting in, in how we want it to react? Is it actually doing that? Hopefully today, we're gonna dispel a few myths. Mm, well, we've got a wonderful piece of water that is ice free, a 20 metre cast, all different types of feeders, ground bait. We can see exactly what's going on at the bottom. I, Rob, I cannot wait to get started. I think today is gonna change my fishing forever. So I cannot wait to have a look. So the final test of the day, and a great point made by Rob there, window feeders, often people would scoop the bait in and then almost just lick it off, I'm saying, with ground bait, good term there. So I'm gonna put this into my bag of casters and I'm gonna fill this feeder up with casters. So, you know, pretty much as many casters as I can get. Look, if I turn that round there in the feeder and I'm just gonna, I need a space for the ground bait. I'm literally, I can't put any more any less ground bait and I'm just gonna gently thumb that on there. I mean, that is, honestly, I have barely touched that on there. Look, all the casters, it's just casters and 5% ground bait, I'm saying. So, a couple of ducks in the swim, perfect timing for them to come in and have a little look. Hopefully they don't see the bait on the bottom or otherwise it's all over. <laughs> but here we go, let's see if we can put this, uh, window feeder into the peg. Does any of this bait come out on the way down? This will be a fascinating finish, I'm sure. So just let this duck go. Okay, here we go. Wow, well, you know what, Lee? A lot of the casters, if not all of the casters, are out of the feeder. You know, I'm saying that some stayed in the feeder, but a hell of a lot came out of the feeder. And you could actually see your little clump of ground bait fall through the water behind them. Really interesting to see. So yeah, your, your casters are coming out of your feeder pretty instantly as, the water, as it's hitting the water. So, you know, a great way of getting that fall of bait if you want that loose feed sort of style of fishing. But I'm not saying that's creating a nice tight parcel of bait around I, your feeder. Rob, I could not have touch that in any more gently than I did. That was like the Mac, you know, I, I, I really literally just a tiny smear. So if that is the way you're doing it, the proof is in the pudding, that bait will come out, isn't it? Exactly what we're trying to say. And, and this is why the balancing act of the pressure that you're putting on, on the ground bait and how much ground bait you're using and, and how you're loading the feeder. And that's why we're doing this video today because the the balancing act of getting all that right makes a massive difference because I'm saying that if you'd have just nipped that in a little bit more, your bait's getting to the bottom. Would you like ball. me to do that, Rob, as a I test? Think, I think to finish with, Lee, I think we need to yep. take that, almost push that to the limit so we know that we're getting our bait to the bottom, but it's being released quick. No now, problem. Just, to, just as a side note, your bait, because we're fishing in, like we say, it's not overly deep water, we're not on a... 20 foot Irish lock, your bait, your those loose, those casters are still landing pretty nicely around your feeder. Once, once they fell through the water, there isn't that arc on your feeder that's pulling your feeder back a meter or so. Your feeder's hitting the bottom where it's landing on the surface, and those casters are gradually falling through the water and landing in a little ring around your feeder and your hook bait. It's great, it looks fantastic on the bottom, but in a deeper, deeper venue, You've got to be really wary of that because you've got toe and all sorts of things that's going to drag those that loose feed away from your hook bait. Brilliant. So I think the the thing is now, 
try and take it to the limit where you know that's as light as you can put that ground bait on that window feeder and still get it to the bottom. A great way. I'm glad that we're pushing this a little bit further to finish off. I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to load that feeder look with casters, as many casters as I can get into that feeder. And then I'm going to put the ground bait on top, but with the judgment this time that I'm going to get that to the bottom. So I'm just going to squeeze that in a little bit firmer. I'm confident. I'm confident. If they come out on the way down, it would have proved something to me as an angler when I load a feeder like that for sure. And it'll prove that previous way when I put it in the ground bait was the more fail safe way. So let's check this out and see what happens. Well, there we go. Every bit of bait has got to the bottom, Lee, in your feeder, nice and intact. I've got to say, you know what? That little six inch square that you're casted on, it's ended up probably two inch deeper because you're casting on exactly the same spot every time. Casting Tell you what, I'm giving myself good marks today, Rob. You know, it's not very often pressure. I give you compliments, but your casting <laughs> has been superb today. So yeah, every bit of bait has landed perfectly on the bottom now when we blow this up on the big screen you'll be able to see how those feeders are sitting properly and we'll be really interested to see what's happening do those feeders sit up are you leaning them what's happening but i think the fact that loading the feeders and i keep going back to it how important that is we've covered nearly everything really when you talk about loading your feeder and different feeder styles i can't think of many many ways that we've not we've we've not covered well i don't think we've missed anything do you no no i'm really happy with it rob and and what i um i'm really interested in there that last chuck was the proof i i you saw me there guys i pushed it in firmer i gave it a firmer push so there is a big difference that little bit of touch that little bit of finesse anyone who believes that loading a feeder is just filling it up and chucking it in you couldn't be more wrong. So really those last two or three casts on the window, the proof was in the pudding.